In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can save a lot of time when you're grading student essays by using a technique that I refer to as auto text with hyperlinks. Now, first of all, what is auto text? Well, technically speaking, it's not even auto text. It's a feature in Microsoft Word that Microsoft refers to as auto correct. And what it's intended to do is when you mistype a word, let's say you mistype the word university, it will automatically replace that mistake with the correctly spelled word. However, I'm using it in a more intentional way. So I'm not calling it auto correct. I'm calling it auto text. Here's what I mean. If I type in my initials, capital M, capital M space, it replaces that shortcut. My initials are the shortcut that I've created, it replaces the shortcut with my full signature. That is what auto text is. The hyperlink part comes in in this way. If I type in, let's say, UW about, that's another shortcut that I've created. I click space and a much longer piece of text appears and you'll see that it includes hyperlinks, the text that is in blue. So if I click on one of the hyperlinks, it takes me to that web page. So that basically is the technique. It's auto text with hyperlinks. How can this save you time when you're grading essays? Well, if you're like me, you're grading 30 or 40 undergraduate essays and you find that maybe 30 or 40 percent of what you are putting in terms of comments is the same thing that again and again you are identifying grammatical problems sentence problems organization problems problems with citations things like that so instead of handwriting that again and again on a hard copy of an essay or instead of typing it again and again in an electronic copy what you do is you turn those repeated common comments into auto text so that you type a shortcut and the full form appears with hyperlinks that will take students to resources that will help them solve that problem. Let me give you an example. Here we have a typical undergraduate essay. It's about the American Civil War. I'm just going to read uh, the first few sentences and I'll show you this technique in action. Over the past 145 years, Scholars and historians have suggested different causes of the American Civil War, and different schools of thought have gone in and out of favor. Not the best introduction, but let's ignore it for the moment. The years immediately after the war regarded it as a clash between those supporting freedom and those supporting slavery. Later scholars saw it as inevitable for other reasons. Okay, first thing. This is a comma splice, a very common grammatical error, so I'm going to type my shortcut, CS space, and this full form gets inserted. This is a comma splice. Click here to learn how to avoid it. The student clicks there, and he or she is taken to a page that explains what comma splices are and how to avoid them. Let's continue. A couple other examples. In the early 1900s, the revisionist school emerged, arguing the war was needless and caused by political blunders and extremism. Abraham Lincoln, in his speeches before, during, and after the war, wavered in what he stated as the need for war. Many people even now disagree about its causes. The cause of the Civil War at the time it was fought, and in the decades following, it was stated slavery as the moral cause. Okay, there's something wrong with that sentence, obviously. It, it doesn't read very well. So I would type another shortcut. UN space and it says this sentence is unclear read it out loud it's a simple thing for students to, to do to simply read what they have written out loud in doing so they will often notice problems that they didn't notice when they were reading it silently in their head so there's no hyperlink in here it's simply an instruction to the students to help them let's read a bit further the North believed that slavery was wrong and the slave should be set free the South believed that slavery was right and should continue okay I'm not a history professor, but uh, if I were, uh, perhaps I would say, oh, the student is really misunderstanding something here or doesn't have the full picture. So in other words, it's not a grammatical problem. It's not a sentence problem. It's a content problem. So for this particular uh, essay topic, I might have created uh, a couple of uh, content related shortcuts. So I might write something like this, C-A-U-S-E-S -S, causes space and it says watch this video about the causes. So now we click here and we are taken to a YouTube video about the December, causes of the Civil 1860. War. 
South Carolina secedes from the... So I think you can see the value and the time-saving nature of this technique. What I'm going to do now is show you how you can set it up on your own computer so that you can use this to save yourself time. The first thing you need to do is to create a list in a document of the comments that you want to appear. Maybe this will be a list of just 10 comments or maybe it will be a list of 30 comments. It really depends on the kinds of things that you find yourself typing again and again. Here I just have four examples and I've already put them in red because you want them to appear in a different color so that when the student looks at his or her essay they will really stand out and I've already added the hyperlink. You probably already know how to add a hyperlink in Word, but just in case you don't, let me show you how to do that. So you highlight the word that you want to create as a hyperlink. First of all, I'm going to, um, I'll just get rid of the one that I have here. Okay, so we're starting fresh. Highlight the word, you right click, click hyperlink, and then put in the address. I've already cut and copied it, so I'm pasting it now. There it is. That's how you do it. It's as simple as that. The next thing you do to create your auto text is this. You highlight one comment, then you go up here to file, then you go down here to options, then you go over here to proofing, then over here on the right to autocorrect options. And you'll see that because I've highlighted it in my document, it already appears. It says this is a comma splice. Click here to learn how to avoid it. Now it's important that you click the formatted text button here because that way not just the text but also the colors and the hyperlink will appear. So click formatted text and then decide upon the shortcut that you want to use. I'm going to type CS for comma splice. It's also important, I think, that you use capital letters. If you don't use capital letters, then if you are typing a word that contains CS, Microsoft Word might think that you actually want to insert the auto text at that point, and you don't. It just happens to be a word that contains those two letters. But if you put them in capitals, then it will help Microsoft Word understand that you only want to insert the auto text when you have a capital C and a capital S. Okay. I click replace. I, in my case, it's replace because I've already created this, but in your case, it will simply, uh, you'll, you'll simply click OK. Click OK again. Click OK down here at the end to get out of the options. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So let's just test it. CS space. There you are. This is a comma splice. Click here to learn how to avoid it. It's going to take you probably an hour or so to create the various auto texts that you want to use in essays, but it's well worth it. In my experience, I would say that using auto texts with hyperlinks in this way has decreased my grading time by about 30%. And as I mentioned earlier, it also is useful for the students because you are giving them hyperlinks in their very essay that they can go to in order to learn how to avoid a particular mistake or in order to learn more content. That's all I want to say about auto text with hyperlinks. I hope that you find it useful.